it's my pleasure this week to say with our, our new webinar platform for our new webinar series here, we're going to have uh, Giovanni Busey joining us from Trieste and um, Max uh, Bonomi joining us from Cambridge, uh, though actually he's in Italy, I believe, right now. And uh, yes, they're going to be telling us today about uh, and do you do you say Plumed or do you say it as an acronym? No, yeah, it's it's actually Plumed. Plumed, okay, thank you. Yep. So they're going to be telling us today about uh, Plumed, and so uh, feel free to send me questions by chat as they go, and I'll sort of pass those on as we need. This um, Blue Jeans tool has audio and video, so we can go ahead and ask questions live. I can mute and unmute you as we go forward, and. Um, uh, with that, uh, go ahead and get, uh, feel free to start. Okay, great. Thanks a lot for setting up everything. It's a really fantastic tool. Uh, okay, so uh, today we will show you how you can use the software plugin Plumed. I will start uh, with some short motivation and tell you something about uh, rare events and collective variables. And then I will show you how to write an input file for Plumed. Then, in the second part, Max from Bergamo will give you a short practical tutorial on a protein folding exercise. So, uh, molecular dynamics simulations are a really powerful tool to study biomolecular dynamics. And in particular, they can be used to investigate systems at virtually infinite spatial and temporal resolution. And in addition, they can be used to quantitatively estimate thermodynamics properties and rates. Their most important limitation, however, is their limits in accessing long timescales. To make an example, classical MD using empirical potentials can be used to study conformational changes, but only can access to timescales on the order of the microseconds, whereas ab initio potentials used to study chemical reactions can only explore hundreds of picoseconds at most. However, many interesting phenomena happen at much longer timescales. For instance, folding a protein from a denatural state might require microseconds in the best case, or even much more, even minutes. Like on target interaction and especially unbinding might require also very long time. And also outside the world of structural biology, there are a number of phenomena that are difficult to access. For instance, phase transitions. So many of these events uh, uh, are not actually slow, but rather rare. For instance, if you, you can see a time series here, the time required to fold the protein might be on the order of a few nanoseconds once the transition has started. However, in order to observe the transition, one should be lucky enough to observe this specific part of the simulation here. On the other hand, for a very large fraction of the time, the protein will just wait for something to happen. So in order to tackle this problem, many methods have been developed in the last year, and many of those are based on collective variables, or CVs, or order parameters. Collective variables are functions of the coordinates of the system that describe the relevant conformational changes. For instance, in order to study a isomerization process, it might be sufficient to monitor the value of a torsional angle without paying attention to every single atom of the system. Collective variables can be obviously used to analyze a trajectory, but they can also be used to bias a trajectory. And in particular, consider the free energy profile shown below here. This is a so-called uh, potential of mean force, and this is just the logarithm of a probability. And uh, this diagram just tells you that this system has two metastable states here, but there is also a state in the middle with a very low probability to be observed, and this is the transition state. If we change the potential artificially, if we lift the energy of the two metastable states artificially in order to uh, relatively stabilize the transition state, we can make this transition happen much faster. This procedure has many analogies with uh, what is used by biological enzymes that stabilize the transition state in order to uh, accelerate uh, reactions. So what is Plumed? Plumed is a plugin aimed at calculating collective variables and adding biasing potentials on those collective variables. As such, it can be used mostly in two ways. First, you can use it to analyze a trajectory, and second, to modify the trajectory on the fly. In the latter case, it usually runs in combination with standard MD software. Example codes that can be used with Plumed are listed here, but the list is, is growing. 
And uh, uh, as you can see, uh, many of these codes are common from the, uh, from the biomolecular community and other are used in uh, material science. And some of them are used for classical MD and some of them for ab initio MD. Indeed, the power of Plumen is in its capability to implement a vast number of CVs and biasing methods using a simple syntax that we will see today in a manner that is transferable across different MD codes and thus different communities. So here we will see the typical workflow of a simulation done with Plumed. So this is a standard MD simulation. What you do is you first initialize your simulation, reading from some file, the parameters like time step, uh, the force field, the temperature, initial coordinates, and so on. And every MD code does this in a specific manner. Then the forces are calculated and equations of motion are integrated for a prefixed number of times. Then the simulation is finalized and the final structure is written. When you combine an MD code with plumed, the workflow is extended with the blocks shown in the middle. In particular, after the MD code has read its input file, plumed is initialized. Basic information about the system, such as the number of atoms, is transferred directly between the MD code and plumed. In addition, plumed reads its input file from a separate file, whose syntax we will see later. Then, at every time step of the simulation, the coordinates of the atoms are passed from the MD code to plumed. Plumed then performs a number of actions specified in its input file. Typically, it can compute some CVs, can write their values on the disk, or in addition, it can compute extra forces for these CVs that are then passed back to the MD engine here. Uh, in the setup that we have seen so far, Plumed uh, is uh, used as an external library and, and in combination with an MD code. But in addition, you can also use Plumed as a standalone tool. And the most common standalone tool in Plumed is the so-called driver. What the driver does is it just reads a tra pre-computed trajectory. And then uh, basically you can use it to uh, analyze a trajectory using the same kind of syntax that you would have used to analyze it on the fly or to bias it in a uh, calculation using a standard MD code. Uh, below you can see the typical input command that you have to use. So in case of Gromax, you have to type gmxmdrun minus plumed plumed dot dot uh, to, in order to say which is the input file for plumed. And whereas if you run plumed standalone, you typically run it with a command like this one. Okay, so this is a typical Plumed input file. Uh, the format is rather intuitive, so we will learn how to write uh, inputs uh, just by seeing some example. First notice the text uh, placed after the sharp symbol, this is just comment. Every line defines uh, a so-called Plumed action. The first action here tells Plumed to calculate that in order to calculate a quantity named dist, it is necessary to compute the distance between atoms one and three. The number of the atoms are serial numbers starting from one, ordered in the same way that they are in the MD code. In this example, the distance is the name of the action, and arg equal to one comma three is an option. Notice that there are no spaces within the option. This is necessary for Plumet to know when the option is over and it should start interpreting a new one. The word at the beginning of the line, ending by a column, provides the name that can be used later to refer to this value. This example with a distance is the simplest possible collective variable that one could imagine. The second and third actions define an angle and a torsional angle, respectively. The last line, finally, tells Plume that the quantities named dist, ang, and tor, defined before, should be printed on a file named colver and should be computed every 10 steps. Some of the actions in Plumed do not uh, perform anything during the simulation, but are rather there in order to simplify the definition of the other actions. Here you see two typical examples. The molinfo action reads, oh sorry, the molinfo action reads from a PDB file information about the residue numbers, types, and atom names. This allows for a number of shortcuts to be implemented. For instance, if you want to select a quadruplet of atoms to define the phi torsion of the third residue, you could choose the serial numbers of these atoms by hand, or you can use the special syntax that is shown here in the example. Many other predefined shortcuts are available. In addition, you might define your own shortcuts using the group action. In this example here, we define a group named solute that contains all atoms with serials between 100 and 200. And then in the later action, gyration, uh, we just use the word solute instead of listing all the atoms. Also notice the special syntax, 1-200, to provide the range without explicitly listing all the atoms. 
Okay, before seeing how to add bias potentials, I would like to warn you about a very important issue that you might easily encounter when using Plump. Most MD simulations are performed using periodic boundary conditions. In order to optimize the calculations, the MD codes can often break the molecules apart. On the left, you can see a polymer composed of six beads. The rectangle represents the simulation box. The positions stored in the MD code are highlighted in yellow. However, due to the periodicity, the physically relevant coordinates are the ones that are colored in yellow in the right panel here. For instance, if you compute the position of the center of the polymer using the coordinates on the left, you would end up on the red star here, which is obviously wrong. On the other hand, the correct position of the center is the one shown here. So now consider the input file below. If you compute the distance between the first and the last bead of the polymer as shown on the left, you will obtain a wrong number. What you should do is to first reconstruct the correct physical coordinates within Plumed. This is done with the action whole molecule, which is one of the most important tools within Plumed. In this example, any collective variable listed in the input file after the whole molecule's command will see the atoms with the correct coordinates. In order to learn how to use wall molecules, it is important to understand how atoms are moved by this action. You can use dump atoms action in order to do so. You might even use an additional dump atoms action before the wall molecules, as it's shown here in the comment, writing on a different file in order to appreciate the difference. Also notice that the distance between the two ends of the polymer is larger than half of the box side. In this case, if we were computing the specific distance using the minimal image convention with periodic boundary conditions, we would end up in the wrong value here. This is the reason why we also added the flag no PBC in the input file. Here, a more complicated example. We have a short RNA duplex in solution. The whole molecule action is going to make here, is going to make the RNA molecule whole. The following action, fit to template, is also changing the coordinates of the atoms stored within plumed. In particular, it is rotating and translating the coordinates of all the atoms of the system in order to minimize the RMSD with respect to a reference structure provided in the specified PDB file. In this example, this file would only contain RNA atoms with their correct serial numbers. The later action, center, defines a new virtual atom placed at the geometric center of RNA. This atom can be used later, for instance, to compute uh, distances or angles. We here use it as an input of yet another action that manipulates atoms through periodic boundaries, this wrap-around action. Here, all the specified atoms that correspond to water are shifted to the periodic image that is as close as possible to the RNA center. The group by three option tells that triples of atoms corresponding to individual water molecules should be kept whole in doing so. Finally, we dump the resulting coordinates on a file. A finally important thing to remember that is, is that most simulations are performed in conditions such that the total energy of the system is invariant with respect to rigid shifts of all the particles that indeed leave their mutual distances unchanged. Let's say that you want to compute the vertical position of an ion in order to know how far it is from a membrane you might be tempted to use the position collective variable. This is, however, a very bad idea. Indeed, imagine what happens if the membrane translates vertically. The same position of the ion will have now a completely different meaning, as you see on the right. A much better solution is to compute the position of the center of the membrane and then monitor the vertical distance between this point and the position of the ion. In this example, you can also appreciate the presence of CVs with multiple components. For instance, the distance CV, when used with the components flag here, defines three different components that can be accessed adding dot .x, dot .y, and dot .z to the label of the action. Okay, it is now time to see how to bias your MD simulations. From the point of view of writing an input file, the syntax is pretty similar to the one used to compute collective variables. In this example, we want to constrain the difference between two distances in order to compute some transfer. We compute the first distance, d1, then we compute the second distance, d2, and their difference, diff. Notice this custom function that allows you for a very flexible definition. You can use any algebraic expression here. Then we apply a restraint. Notice that this restraint has a default stride equal to one, meaning that it is applied at every time step. In this specific case, the restraint will force the system, the difference between the two distances to fluctuate around minus 0.5. Then the print command is used to write the callbar file. 
This is another example with metadynamics. The method allows a potential energy function aimed at compensating the underlying free energy profile to be constructed with a history-dependent procedure. This is a classical example using alanine dipeptide and adding a bias potential on the two dihedras phi and psi. The metadic command constructs a potential by adding Gaussians with width 0.32 radians, height 1.2 kJ per mole every 500 steps. Finally, a Colbert file is written. Notice that in virtue of the bias potential, the system will be able to sample all the available values for phi and psi. The free energy can then be reconstructed by taking the negative of the bias potential. So if you want to learn more about Plume, you should be able to find a lot of information on the web. You can start from our homepage, plume.org, and if you are interested, our C++ source code, which is open source and available on GitHub. We have a very active Google group where you could find answers to your doubts. You are also encouraged to read the original papers in order to learn more about the available features. In the past, we organized several events, most importantly two tutorials in Belfast and Trieste, and another event is foreseen for next year. All the material used at these tutorials is available online, and the recent Trieste tutorial is probably the best starting point. Finally, on GitHub, you can find the material related to the tutorial that you will see with Max in a few minutes at this page. So before letting the word to Max, I would like to thank all the people involved. The developers of the code are explicitly listed here. However, Plume is becoming a community effort and already includes many methods implemented by other people. On GitHub, you will be able to find out who are the other contributors. The development of Plume is largely funded by the salary of the people working on the code. So I would like to end thanking the University of Cambridge, my institution, CISA, the University of Milan, and the Queen's University in Belfast. And then I will uh, let the word to Max. Thank you very much, Giovanni. Let me share the screen. Okay. Um, so I'm uh, Max Bonomi. I'm one of the other core developers of Plune. Uh, before before starting, I, I I have to apologize. I'm connecting from Italy, and there is a, a nice church nearby. But uh, you might hear the bells ringing from time to time. It will give you a, a nice taste of Italy. And uh, but I apologize for that. So after Giovanni's introduction and overview of a, of a plumed code, um, I will. Um, switch to a more practical uh, application and in the next uh, 15 minutes or so I will uh, show you how to use Plumed in combination with uh, the Gromax molecular dynamics code to perform a metadynamic simulation and uh, to use uh, the Plumed utilities to uh, post-process and calculate other useful quantities from the, um, the metadynamic simulation. So the system that we are going to study is a GB1 protein that you can see here on the left of my screen. And you can see it here in its uh, so-called native state. So it's the most populated conformation in solution. And we will simulate this with uh, molecular dynamics and a pretty simplified uh, physical model for the system or force field. Uh, this is called a smog go model. It's uh, simplified because it accounts, it promotes only um, those contacts that are formed in these uh, uh, particular native states and not uh, all the non-native interaction which are not considered in this energy model. So it's a very simplified and funneled like energy landscape and the bottom of this funnel, the most stable structure is, is this one. Actually, we will start our molecular dynamic simulation with, from another state which is this extended conformation. In order to perform this um, metadynamic simulation, we need to prepare an input file, a dedicated input file, and it's, uh, uh, you can see it here on the left side of my screen, and I will go uh, line by line and comment all the different actions. So the first thing, as Giovanni said, we need to reconstruct internally implumed uh, the molecule or, or an entity that we define because it's broken inside the uh, molecular dynamic simulation cell and implumed is broken by periodic boundary conditions. So the first thing is using this whole molecule's action and defining, uh, defining the molecule. And we can do this, we can do this in two ways. Either we just list uh, all the atoms of this protein with this simplified notation from atom 1 to 436. And this will just take all the atoms in, of the protein and make them whole. Or, and, and I will comment the next line, this one, sorry. 
or we can just specify those atoms that will be used in the in the rest of this plumed input file to calculate all the quantities. So I will just use this, which selects some particular atoms of, of the system that are called C alpha uh, carbons. So this um, is needed for Evans decalculation in the version of plume that I'm showing now, which is the current version, 2.4.1. Starting from the next one, uh, probably this uh, won't be needed anymore. Next thing that we need to do to perform our uh, metadynamic simulation is to define a collective variable. For this very simplified Go model potential, the RMSD is a good collective variable. If you're interested in, in, in understanding exactly what is good and bad collective variable, there are examples on our website and there is a vast literature about collective variables and, and, and what do we need from them to, to make this enhanced sampling method work pretty well. So in, in this case, it's, it's a simple, it's simpler problem, and, and we want to define the RMSD, so the deviation of, of a, a current conformation from a reference one, and we do this using the RMSD uh, action. We need to define a reference conformation, and, and we do this by just specifying a PDB file. The RMSD is just the deviation of uh, the difference between the uh, current coordinates and the coordinates of this reference conformation, but the, this deviation is calculated after aligning the um, current conformation to, to, the, to the reference one, and, uh, uh, and this is specified by this type optimal, so it will be, uh, they will be calculated optimal translation and rotation to, to align the two, uh, the two conformation, and you can specify in the PDB file which atoms will be used uh, for the alignment and for the calculation of the RMSD, and in principle, these two sets of atoms can be, can be different. So, once we have defined the, the collective variable, the RMSD, we need to activate the metadynamics algorithm, and we use the metad action to do this. And uh, this action will be labeled as MDT, and then we need to specify with the arg uh, <coughs> keyword, which, which is a collective variable, here is the RMSD, and then we need to, to specify the parameters that are, that are specific to this algorithm, uh, metadynamics. So we need to specify the width of a Gaussian, in this case 0 0.05 nanometer, which is the default unit of measure for length in plumed. We need to specif specify <coughs> the initial high of a Gaussian, it's 1.2 kJ per mole, and uh, uh, the stride uh, for, yields, for Gaussian deposition is 500 uh, steps. So here we are using a, a special version of metadynamics it's called well tempered metadynamics, and this Gaussian high is reduced uh, over the simulation time. And the, let's say the, 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 the speed of reduction is determined by this bias factor. Uh, finally, for, for computational convenience, we will store the metadynamics bias potential on a grid, and this grid range, uh, ranges from 0 nanometer to 5 nanometer. Okay, uh, next one, we want to, to add uh, another restraint. We want to limit the exploration in the RMSD space uh, in, a, in a certain range, and we don't want to, to visit conformation that are uh, very far away from the Nati state. So we put a, what we call an upper wall on the, uh, specified in this line, on the collective variable RMSD. This is just an harmonic restraint, which is acting only when the system goes beyond 2.5, which is nanometer, which is specified by this at keyword. And the intensity is, uh, of harmonic restraint is specified by kappa, which is equal to 1000 kJ per mole. <coughs> Next one, we're almost done. We want, besides biasing with metadynamics via RMSD, we want to calculate an additional uh, collective variable and just monitor this variable along during the simulation. And in this case, we want to monitor the total energy, potential energy of the system. And, uh, and this is, can be simply done by putting by using the energy uh, directive. We do this because in this specific case, the energy of the system is very well correlated with the RMSD from the native state, which is the nature of the Go model potential. Finally, we want to print some information to file, and we use the print directive, and the argument that we want to print is the RMSD, the energy, the bias of metadynamics, and the bias of this upper wall, and we print this information every 100 steps on the file callback. So this is the, the, the plumed input file, and once we have prepared uh, prepare this file, we just need to 
submit our metadynamic simulation. So this is the standard way to, to, to run a Gromax uh, simulation. We just add the plumed keyword and the name of a plumed input file, and we submit the simulation. Now, this should run for long until, this, let's say, the, the simulation is converged. I will, I, I will tell you more about this in a second. I will just stop it, and I will go to this directory in which I have a longer simulation than previously done, so we can have a look at a more converged result. So it, it, let just analyze a bit what is the output of Plumed. We have uh, two files uh, that we, which we don't have when you run normally Gromax, which are the Colvar file and the ILS files. And plus, we have some information regarding Plumed written in the standard Gromax output. So I will start with the Gromax output, which is columnd.log usually. And I will look for the Plumed keyword. And here, you see, you can, you can uh, look at some basic information regarding your simulation. For example, the version of Plume you're using, how many cores you're using, a, a bit of a summary of all the action that you have activated, so whole molecules, the RMSD, the metadynamics, the upper wall, and so on and so forth. And at the end, you have, a, let's say, a kind of reminder of the references you want to cite, uh, because these are the methods that you have activated in this Plume input file. So this is as far as the Gromax log is concerned is, is done. And then we have a look at the other two files. One is the Colver file here, which report all the quantities specified in the print line of your input file. So it's time, this is always added in femtosecond, the NMSD from the NATI state, the energy of the system, the bias of metadynamics, and the bias of the upper wall. <laughs> so for example, now we can visualize uh, for example, with new plot, uh, how the RMSD is changing over the simulation time. And here what you should get. So basically, the system is starting from this very extended non-native conformation here, and after a while, is uh, thanks to this metadynamics bias potential, is reaching the, uh, a conformation close to the native state, and visiting uh, for a while, and then... Uh, is uh, again visiting extended probably conformation, in general non-native conformation, and going back and forth from uh, one state or one series of states to another. And this is done thanks to adding this metadynamics uh, bias potential. And the fact that it's going back and forth between uh, the range, let's say, where we have specified from 0 to 2.5 is already a good sign that sampling is enhanced and, and, and maybe it's time to stop the simulation. Uh, we also printed the energy of the system in, uh, in our input file, so we can visualize the RMSD versus the energy of the system, and you see that there is a very nice correlation, and conformation that are native-like have very low energy here, so this is consistent with the physical model that we are using in this simulation. So this is uh, what you can, let's say, the uh, quick analysis that you can do just by looking at the Colvar file. The other important file produced by the simulation is the HILS file. Here you can, let me just open this a bit more. Here you can see uh, a list of all the Gaussian, Gaussians that are, have been deposited uh, by the metadynamics during the metadynamics simulation. So you will see the center of this Gaussian, the, the time, sorry, of deposition in frame to second, the center, so the value of RMSD at that particular time, and all the parameters of the Gaussian, so the, the width, the high, which is reducing time, and the bias factor. This is a very useful file because it can be used to uh, calculate an estimate of the free energy by integrating the deposited Gaussian. And to do this, uh, we need to use one of the um, plumed post-processing tool. It's called SumHills. And, and we need just to specify the name of the Hills files. And then we want to calculate this uh, estimated free energy as a function of simulation time. So we want to calculate this free energy every 500 Gaussian, for example. So if we do this, we have, we, and we look at our directory, we, you, you can see that we have multiple uh, FES free energy surface file, and we can, files, and we can, uh, look, we can look at them all together, for example, like this. So we can have a look at the estimate of the free energy as a function of simulation time. And this, of course, of course, changes very, very much in the beginning of a simulation when you start visiting 
uh, different part of the RMSD space, uh, of a collective variable space, but if a simulation is, is, uh, is close to convergence, the estimate of the free energy uh, should uh, stabilize, this is the, the, the last, let's say, um, estimate of the free energy should stabilize around uh, the, the correct value. And so in, in this case, as you can see, there is still minor uh, or changes uh, during the last part of the simulation, which means uh, that the simulation is not yet converged. This is a very qualitative uh, assessment of the simulation convergence. Uh, if you go to our uh, website, uh, we have a, a list of tutorials for metadynamics, and there you can find the stricter conditions and, and uh, a way of assessing the error uh, at a given time of the simulation, which is what you always should do. So the last thing that we can look at is the trajectory. Uh, of our metadynamic simulation, which, which I already opened here. Let me move this here uh, to see what the system is doing during the, your metadynamic simulation. So it's starting from this extended state and then is, is, is visiting, for example, the native state and then reopening again. And if you look carefully, there are some frames in which the, the conformation, for example, like this, is completely, is completely broken. And this is due to the periodic boundary conditions. So what we are going to do now is to post-process this uh, uh, trajectory and calculate other quantities and try to reconstruct the whole, uh, um, the whole protein. And to do this, we need to prepare another file, which I, I'm opening it here. And in this file, we will define other collective variables that we want to calculate a posteriori. So let's, let's look at this file. The first thing is to specify this MOLINFO uh, action, which uh, will enable us to use some, some shortcuts, as, as Giovanni told you already. And to do this, we need, again, a structure file, uh, which is a PDB file with all the atoms of the system. Then we want to make the entire protein uh, whole, so fixing this PBC issue. We want to recompute the RMSD exactly as we did uh, during the simulation. And then we want to calculate other useful quantities, and we can we can calculate many of them, uh, and we have a list in our, on our website I will show you later. Here, is, in particular, we want to calculate how many residues as a alpha helix secondary structure. And so we, uh, we, we can, actually we select only those residues that are in alpha helix secondary structure in the native states, and we want to, to see on the fly how many of these residues is actually a alpha helix secondary structure. To do this, we need to specify the list of dihedral angles. These are the psi uh, backbone uh, dihedral angles. And we specify this using the shortcuts that uh, are enabled by the MOLINFO uh, directive. And, and so we specify the list of dihedrals and then a reference value, which is typical of alpha helix secondary structure. So this is the alpha beta uh, directive, and we can do the same, for example, for beta sheet, because here in the United States, you see there is a mixture of alpha and, and beta uh, secondary structure. So we, we specify the list of the hydro angles and the reference value, this time for beta sheet. So this is, for example, what we can monitor, and then we print out all the information to a new file, which is called Colvar Analysis. Finally, we want to print out uh, a reconstructed uh, conformation after fixing for PBC and aligning, as Giovanni told you, uh, and aligning to a reference uh, conformation, which is again specified by a PDB file. And once these operations are done, we print out the new trajectory on this, uh, on this file, which is in Gromax format, but other formats are supported. So once we have prepared this input file, we just uh, need to run the analysis tool, which is called driver. And uh, to do this, again, we need to provide the name of the input file and uh, the name of the trajectory file. This should be done quickly. Here we go. And, and the output is uh, the Colvar analysis file here and the new trajectory file with PBC fixed. So we can have a look at the Colvar analysis. And here we should look, for example, at the RMSD versus the content of alpha helix. So the number of residues 
that are, have alpha helix secondary structure. And you can see that when the system, when the conformation is native-like, so this is the RMSD, the content of alpha helix of, this res, of those residues that should be an alpha helix is pretty high, which is, which is very nice. And the same thing we can do with beta sheet. Here, when, when the system is, uh, is in a native conformation, uh, actually the beta sheet content is high. So this is just an example of what you can calculate a posteriori uh, using the, uh, the driver and, and, and plumed. Finally, to conclude, I want just to show you how PBC are reconstructed. So we open this, uh, this new uh, trajectory file. Maybe I will make this a bit thicker here. And so we can uh, watch again our trajectory and, 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 and check that, I don't know if you can see because it's, it's pretty fast, and check if post conformation that were broken by PBC have been reconstructed correctly. And it's, it seems to be the case. Okay, this was just to, to show a, a, a two quick example of what you can do with Plumed. If you're interested, you can go to our, to our um, website and there is a, a manual online. This is the last version and you can have a, a list of collective variables that are ready to use here. There is a list of, uh, of enhanced sampling method or bias that you can add to the simulation. And finally, most importantly, maybe there is a tutorial page uh, multiple tutorials uh, pages uh, in which you can learn uh, the other things that, that, that you can do uh, with Plumed. And I think with this I, I'm done. I want just to uh, show this, uh, this slide and I, I guess it's, it's time for a question now. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Max and Giovanni. I, uh, if anyone has questions, you can send them to me by chat. You can also uh, unmute your um, mic and your uh, camera if you like, and you could ask them directly if you want. Um, I have a, a couple of questions. Um, one, uh, you mentioned that the, the, the input files that you're using are constant across um, the large number of MD programs that that uh, Plumed can use to, um, is that, was am I right in saying that, that that file you were showing before you could use for Gromax, but you could also use it for other applications. Is that true? Uh, yes, the, the files are, are completely portable. Uh, here we are writing, in, uh, for example, this trajectory in a specific format, which is a format uh, uh, typical of Gromax, but other more general format like the PDB or the XYZ are, are supported. But yes, the, the, the files are, are portable. And, and, um, and you can switch from one code to, to another. I get that. I don't know if, it, yes. That brought up one thought for me is that um, the Plume team must be uh, very familiar with lots of different uh, MD packages then because to be able to, to write these and use and test them and sort of validate what you're using. What, um, what programs are your sort of go-to MD packages? You're showing Gromax. Is that um, the one you sort of go to as your, uh, your favorite or do you jump between them? What do you, what do you use for... Uh, your Maybe day I day can day answer day. this. Yeah. Uh, so yes. uh, I would say that uh, uh, we, we mostly use Gromax, but some of us is using uh, LAMPS as well. Uh, but then uh, actually the, the interface, uh, for some code, the interface with Plume is maintained by the developer of the code itself. So that's the case, for instance, for CP2K. We didn't do anything, and uh, Plume is just a library that can be included in any MD code. So, of course, in order to make this, to implement this, you need to know very well that specific MD code. But uh, on the other hand, the interface of Plumer is very well documented. So if developers of another code want to include it, it should be easy to do. In the case that you were showing where Gromax was calling it with the, with the dash plumed flag, is it, is it calling uh, an executable from path or does it have a library that's compiled or linked in in some way? Uh, no, in that case, the executable was the, was the Gromax executable, and the, you have to, when you install Gromax, you have to install a special version of Glom, Gromax, uh, which includes yeah. Plumed. But some other code just come equipped with Plumed uh, natively. For instance, that's the case for the Sander package of uh, Amber, 
In that case, you don't have to do anything. Just install, Sander, install Plume, and then run. And then the post-processing tools you call directly from from Plumed, uh, from the command yes. line, like you would anything else. Yeah. And it looks yes. like... Uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, it, Plumed is a, there is a library which is a link against the code, and then there are some uh, standalone tools, like the, 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 the tools that I shown today, the driver and the sum yields, which helps uh, calculating a posteriori other quantities. And when you run uh, your simulation with uh, Plume, do you are there performance implications of using? Uh, does it does it run slower? Are there better architectures that you would choose to run it? Uh, Giovanni, you want to answer yeah, you, this or what? Uh, I can yeah, uh, it de it depends. Uh, uh, I mean, it depends a lot on the system. Clearly, if you have uh, a simulation with a lot of atoms, and you only use a small number of atoms for computing your collective variables, then the overhead is not uh, so much. But it depends a lot on the specific system. So, and also there are some tricks that uh, you can use to speed up Plumed. We explain some in the manual, and uh, sometimes we help people on the mailing list uh, in order to better set up their calculations. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see. Uh... And then um, it looks like the post-processing tools are not particularly computationally intensive, that you could probably just run those. You could take your trajectory from your, your favorite HPC you know, supercomputer and move it to your MacBook and still run those and be able to do some post-processing. Yes, uh, yeah. absolutely, yes. Yeah. So, so, um, and in most it, cases also the on-the-fly calculation are, are not... Uh, Introducing a, a big overhead, but as Giovanni said, we have a we have a page dedicated to how to uh, speed up things uh, best. Great, I think uh, that's something that users do a lot of. I am, um, you know, I find, you know, it, at first uh, guess people say I I would like to have Gromax for my Mac, and I think like, well, why are you running Gromax? But it's for processing their trajectories when they bring them back off of their. HPC or their, you know, big iron supercomputers to really take a look at their results. So I think this tool could also be useful in that way, and people are using it that way. Um, I think that's it uh, for my questions. With that, um, uh, Giovanni and Max, thank you very much for the, the great webinar. Uh, Plumed is in SP Grid. We have the latest version, 2.4.1, and if um, give it a try, and if you have any questions or issues, be sure to let us know. And uh, with that, thank you again. Thanks. Thank Thanks a lot. Much. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.